Here's why William Haynes kicked out of Hollywood. William Haynes was born Charles William Haynes on January 2, 1900, in Staunton, Virginia, the third child of George Adam Haynes, a cigar maker, and Laura Virginia Haynes. Two older siblings died in infancy. He had four younger siblings, Lillian, Anne, George, and Henry. He was baptized at the Trinity Episcopal Church in Staunton at the age of eight, where he later sang in the choir. He became fascinated with stage performance and motion pictures at an early age, spending hours watching early silent films in the local theaters. Haynes ran away from home at the age of 14, accompanied by an unidentified young man to whom Haynes referred as his boyfriend. The pair went first to Richmond and then to Hopewell, which had a reputation for immorality. Haynes and his boyfriend got jobs working at the local DuPont factory, producing nitrocellulose for $50 a week. To supplement their income, the couple opened a dance hall, which may have also served as a brothel. His parents, frantic over his disappearance, tracked him through the police to Hopewell. Haynes did not return home with them remaining instead in Hopewell and sending money back home to help support the family. The couple remained in Hopewell until most of the town was destroyed by fire in 1915. Haynes moved to New York City. Following the bankruptcy of the family business and the mental breakdown of his father, the family moved to Richmond in 1916. Haynes returned home in 1917 to help support them. With his father recovered and employed, Haynes returned to New York City in 1919, settling into the burgeoning gay community of Greenwich Village. He worked a variety of jobs and was for a time the kept man of an older woman before becoming a model. Talent scout Bijou Fernandez discovered Haynes as part of the Goldwyn Pictures' New Faces of 1922 contest and the studio signed him to a $40 a week contract. He traveled to Hollywood with fellow contest winner Eleanor Boardman in March of that year. Haynes' career began slowly, as he appeared in extra and bit parts, mostly uncredited. His first significant role was in Three Wise Fools, 1923. He attracted positive critical attention and the studio began building him up as a new star. However, he continued to play small, unimportant parts at Goldwyn. When his home studio lent him to Fox in 1923 for The Desert Outlaw, he got the opportunity to play a significant role. In 1924, MGM lent Haynes to Columbia Pictures for a five-picture deal. The first of these, The Midnight Express, 1924, received excellent reviews, and Columbia offered to buy his contract. The offer was refused and Haynes continued in bit roles for Goldwyn. Haynes scored his first big personal success with Brown of Harvard, 1926, opposite Jack Pickford and Mary Bryan. It was in Brown that he crystallized his screen image, a young arrogant man who is humbled by the last reel. It was a formula to which he repeatedly returned for the next several years. On a trip to New York in 1926, Haynes met James Jimmy Shields. Haynes convinced Shields to move to Los Angeles, promising to get him work as an extra. The pair soon began living together and viewed themselves as a committed couple, though newspapers did not mention their relationship. Haynes was a top five box office star from 1928 to 1932. He made a successful transition into talkies in the part-talking film Alias Jimmy Valentine, 1928. He was forced to take elocution lessons for the film. He compared the coming of sound to the discovery of clap in a nunnery. His first all-talking film, Navy Blues, was released the following year. He starred in Way Out West in 1930. The 1930 Quigley Poll, a survey of film exhibitors, listed Haynes as the top box office attraction in the country. In 1933, Haynes was arrested in a young men's Christian association with a sailor he had picked up in Los Angeles Pershing Square. Louis B. Mayer, the studio head at MGM, delivered an ultimatum to Haynes. Choose between a sham lavender marriage, 
his relationship with Shields or his relationship with the sailor. Haynes chose Shields and they remained together in a private relationship for 47 years. Mayer subsequently fired Haynes and terminated his contract. He made a few minor films at Poverty Row Studios, then retired from acting. His final films were made with mascot pictures, and the Marines are coming in 1934. Haynes and Shields later began a successful dual career as interior designers and antique dealers. Among their early clients were friends such as Joan Crawford, Carol Lombard, Marion Davies, and George Cukor. The couple finally settled in the Hollywood community of Brentwood and their business prospered until their retirement in the early 1970s. Sadly, on December 26, 1973, Haynes died from lung cancer in Santa Monica, California, at the age of 73. He is interred in Woodlawn Memorial Cemetery in Santa Monica. Goodbye William Haynes.